if you were to give the Iowa State football program a rating in terms of conference championship success on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being a big-time drought, to me, the Cyclones would rate a minus 20. They wouldn't even be on the scale. Now, you got to go back 105 years ago to 1912, the same year that the Titanic sank, to find a conference champion from Ames, Iowa. In fact, Iowa State that year just won their second straight Missouri Valley Intercollegiate Athletic Association crown. Man, that's a mouthful to say, huh? By the way, that conference went defunct uh, 89 years ago. Not to be a dead horse, but Iowa State, throughout its football history, well, in terms of success, not much of it. They've never had a 10-win season. As a matter of fact, they've only had two 9-win campaigns, 1906 and in the year 2000. Now, speaking of contemporary times, yeah, the Cyclones since 2000 have not had a season in which they've won more than seven games. In addition, if you're looking at uh, last year, Matt Campbell's first year, as head coach of ISU, um, yeah, there were a lot of setbacks. They went three and nine, second straight year that they only won three games. And if you want to look at the silver lining of last season, yeah, they could have been a bowl team. They could have had six, maybe seven wins. Keep in mind that in 2016, they had a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter against Baylor, lost. 10 point lead against Oklahoma State entering the fourth quarter, lost. And they had five point losses to both Northern Iowa and to Kansas State. And they played very hard in front of a nationally televised audience on a Thursday night late in the season against my Sooners, only to fall to OU by 10 points. Big thing for Iowa State, you know, amongst the problems that they had last season when they went 3-9, and nine, biggest thing is they got to learn how to finish games, be a better team in the fourth quarter, and by and large, we didn't see that. So it can only go up for Iowa State, right? Well, let's take a look at the offense first for ISU, and at least now they're a little bit more certain about the quarterback position. you got to remember uh, last year Joe Lanning started, but as the year wore along, it looked like Campbell was favoring Jacob Park a little bit more. And Park ended up seeing the majority of snaps over the final five games, and I thought Park's stats were modest, 12 TDs and only five picks. Uh, he didn't get to 2,000 yards passing, but you got to remember he didn't see – um, a lot of snaps until the second half of the season. So this year, barring injury, um, the passing yardage total is going to be a lot more. Um, as far as the receivers, it's, hey, it's one of the better units around in the Big 12, and Alan Lazard is a big reason why. He's a constant all-Big 12 player, and if it wasn't for James Washington at Oklahoma State, I think Lazard would be the best receiver in the conference. Over 1,000 yards receiving last year, 63 receptions, about 14 yards per catch. He did have three touchdowns at six feet, five inches tall, very athletic. Um, I do think we'll see him in the NFL um, next year. Now, other receivers that can make contributions, Trevor Ryan, he's got experience, also Deshante Jones, and a guy that uh, came along midseason uh, through the junior college route, one of the newer additions in Matt Eaton. He can make an impact as well. So a receiver, no problem for Iowa State. The ground attack, the guy experienced there, you might remember two years ago, Mike Warren, the uh, former Lawton, Oklahoma product, two years ago was a Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year, had over 1,300 yards rushing. Last year, had a couple of things against him. Number one, high ankle sprain, so his play was limited. But also number two, you know, when the ankle wasn't really an issue, he got called out, you know, publicly in the media by, guess who, by his coach Matt Campbell for not working hard enough in practice. So hopefully that's changed for Mike Warren. Um, David Montgomery had an opportunity uh, throughout the latter part of the season to prove what he can do, and he had a little over five yards of carry, two touchdowns, and had 563 yards rushing. So you have both of them uh, returning, but their play is going to be heavily predicated upon an offensive line, which for another year has to rebuild. You might remember last year they only had one returning starter, in uh, Jake Campus, but Campus's season, yeah, it went by the wayside because of a broken leg. So they have him back now after he missed uh, 2016. At the other tackle, looks like they're going to go with the freshman in Sean Foster. So Iowa State is going to be fairly young up front. In fact, of the 60 starts amongst the five down linemen last year, 
You lose 49 of those starts entering this season. The guy who occupied most of those starts, by the way, uh, Julian Good Jones, who is at the center position. It'll also help that uh, you're getting a guy with some experience, even though he didn't play at Iowa State in 2016. He's a former Wolverine going from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Ames, Iowa, and that's the right guard in Dave Dawson. And at the left guard position, you've got Bryce Meeker, uh, just a sophomore. Iowa State last year, in terms of total offense, you know, how'd they do? Well, it just depends on your perspective. Gets the rest of the college football world, ranked 60th of 128 schools. Not bad. 421 yards per game. But 420 yards per game doesn't cut it in the Big 12, which, of course, has that offensive identity. That total only ranked 8th out of 10 teams in the Big 12 a year ago. Defensively, it was not a defense that always broke and didn't always give up the big play, but they bended quite a bit, especially against the run. Not only that, but the Cyclones, in terms of sack differential, they were bad in this area. The offense gave up well over 30 sacks last year on defense. They only amassed 18, about a minus 13 difference in that department. A big emphasis that Iowa State had entering um, the recruiting process during the offseason getting some of the best JUCO players you could find. And if you look at at least one source, um, their number one, three, and four recruits from this last class, not only junior college players, but all defensive linemen. And don't be surprised if all three of these guys uh, see significant playing time. This is one of the biggest reasons why Camila uh, Tungamoa, Ray Lima, and Matt Leo picked Iowa State because they knew that they could play right away. I, I think this will be the case, especially in the case of uh, Ray Lima. These were all three outstanding junior college players. Linebacker, experience there with uh, Willie Harvey, leading returning tackler for the Cyclones, had 78 stops a year ago, and also Everett Edmonds. Um, you return him as well. He'll play primarily the star position. Remember earlier I mentioned Joe Lanning, who played most of his career as a quarterback for ISU? Well, not only is he not playing quarterback this year, he's not playing offense. They're moving him to the defensive side at middle linebacker, so that'll be a fun experiment. Secondary, some experience there, too. Remember, Iowa State's defense last year wasn't very good, but the secondary, statistic-wise, did okay. Um, Brian Peavy, they got him back at corner. They also have a DeAndre Payne, who saw playing time. And at safety returning is Kamara Colton Moya, who had two picks a year ago. Even though the Iowa State secondary, as far as pass defense, uh, didn't do too bad. Remember, though, teams primarily attacked Iowa State on the run because they knew that Iowa State could not stop the run. So that stat could be a little bit skewed right there. Um, for Iowa State, we're going to see if they can uh, force turnovers. They didn't really do a good job of that last year. And again, getting to the quarterback, um, a key for any team across football. We know that, but in the case of Iowa State, um, they really have to address this issue, and maybe the addition of those junior college standouts I mentioned earlier will aid in that, but that's unproven. Cole Netton um, was their all-time leading kicker, accuracy, and distance. He was uh, one of the best of Big 12 has seen. Punting situation, at least that's not as worrisome with Colin Downing um, coming back. He's a very good punter. Schedule for Iowa State, two of the first three games, they got a shot at W's. Last year, Northern Iowa beat them, but two years ago, Iowa State won the game. Two teams, again, will start the season against each other in Ames. Second game for the Cyhawk Trophy, Iowa blew Iowa State out last year, but this year's games in Ames. Akron's one of the worst teams in the country. ISU should get a win there. Get 12 days to get ready. Will the Cyclones and Longhorns for their late September showdown on Thursday night on national television two years ago, Iowa State blanked Texas, but last year the Longhorns got the better end of the game. After the Oklahoma game, perhaps two victories for Iowa State await them. You got Kansas at home and Texas Tech, that game right now pretty much a coin flip, but the game is in Lubbock. And then the last five games, it's not going to be easy at all. Maybe the best shot of the win for Iowa State is going to be that showdown in Waco against Baylor. But like I said, the game's in Waco, and last year the Cyclones won just one time on the road, which was a narrow escape at Kansas. The Vegas win total has Iowa State at 5.5 wins. I'm not that optimistic that they'll reach that level. In fact, I'm going to go with a four-win season. Yes, Alan Lazard is one of the best receivers in the Big 12, in fact, the best in Iowa State history, and it is 
an experienced backfield. But too many questions on the offensive line, plus defensively, until they can contain the run and get more pressure on the quarterback. I just can't see Iowa State getting to that bowl requirement of six victories or even at five wins. I think it's going to be a four-win season, but hey, that's a slight improvement from the 2016 three-win season. That's my look at the Cyclones. We'll see you next time.